Hello, friends. Um, thanks for joining us and welcome if you're new to practicing with us. This is, uh, I'll put a link down below and a link here in the um, Zoom chat that uh, depending when you're practicing with us, but at this time it's it's uh, near the nearish to the end of May. And um, with True North Insight, we're, it's called Meta May. And there's lots of different practices and most of the teachers are offering Meta Bhavana practices. <clears throat> and uh, so the link, which is down below and here in the chat, is um, Hmm, a statement and an invitation to support True North Insight if you're able um, during this Meta May as it's part of our fundraising so we can continue offering scholarship places in our meditation retreats and also uh, continue to support um, diversity and equity values in, in how we're operating. So... Um, any amount of support is uh, necessary, really, for us to continue the truth, and um, and and very helpful. So, as you're able, if you're able, that is uh, felt as a part of this meta practice, which I'll explain a bit more in a moment, and. I also want to put here, I'll put it in the chat, and I'm actually going to um, read it because because uh, <laughs> I want to, and uh, because it uh, is helpful to give voice and speak these uh, things out loud. So this is our True North Insight, um, better late than never, <laughs> uh, statement on, on Gaza. And uh, I just want to um, say it here into this space as part of Metta Bhavana, the cultivation of loving kindness and uh, compassion, which is a uh, action, a response to the suffering we see in the world. So um, written over, you know, a, a lot of a lot of intention, a lot of time and uh, communication with the board and guiding teachers and with Sangha members and for this to come together. So dear Sangha community, as we write this statement, more than 35,000 people have been killed by Israel's assault on Palestine. These numbers do not capture everyone under the rubble. Many more people continue to die of starvation. And as a Dharma organization, we are called to respond to the devastation of Gaza and to add our voices to the global demand for a permanent ceasefire and for humanitarian aid to be provided to Palestine. We've learned from our tradition that in this world, hate is never dispelled by hate, only love dispels hate. This is the law, ancient and inexhaustible. This is from the Dhammapada. As we call for an end to the ongoing massacre, dispossession and dehumanization of the Palestinian people, we also lament the killing of over 1,200 Israelis and the abduction of some 240 people as hostages last October 7th. We've watched in distress as these Israeli deaths have been used as justification for this terrible violence. And Jewish ancestral trauma has been weaponized while generations of occupation and apartheid in Palestine have been erased or minimized. We reject Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. We grieve past and present wrongs rooted in colonialism, oppression, discrimination, and injustice. 
We wish for justice as well as for peace and safety for all Arabs of all faiths and Jews in the Middle East and around the world. We advocate for dialogue, deep listening, understanding and reconciliation. And we call for basic human rights and dignity for all. In these past months, we've engaged in reflective dialogues with our Sangha, with those seeking refuge in community, in our BIPOC Sangha. And we have heard how witnessing the siege of Gaza has re-traumatized those who have experienced displacement, war, and colonization. And we've also heard from Jewish Sangha members who are distressed by the rise in anti-Semitism and polarization and they seek connection, clarity, and wisdom in the face of ancestral trauma. As a Sangha, we are one body, and together we are a living expression of one of the three precious jewels, Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. We are interconnected and interdependent, and we affirm the values and wisdom of wisdom and compassion among all of our beloved Sangha groups. We recognize that this message might feel inadequate to some or activating to others. And our intention is to speak from truth and compassion, encouraging mindfulness and skillful action, fostering empathy, healing and mutual respect. Let us continue to learn and unlearn, striving towards a world where Palestine is free and all beings may live free from fear, fear and oppression, with friendship, compassion, and solidarity from True North Insight Board and guiding teachers and, um, and all of the teachers. So thank you for letting me say that. It feels like kind of putting it on the record, speaking it out loud, not just leaving it sitting on the website. Um, yeah. And it really connects with this Metta May practice of um, that is being offered and um, what I hope to share with you tonight. <clears throat> so Metta is a Pali word, which um, in the Pali English Dictionary is translated as, as love, as friendliness. As, um, and I like this part, active interest in others. Isn't that lovely? Metta, active. This is, you know, it's, it's an action, how we speak, how we respond, how we show up. Active interest in others. It's, that's beautiful. It's also, um, has a part of the definition, this word, Amity, A-M-I-T-Y, which isn't one we use very often in English, and it means peaceful relationship. So a beautiful thing to cultivate and wish for. And then the other part of this practice is called metta bhavana. And bhavana means cultivation or development of this friendliness towards all beings. It also means dwelling, dwelling in this mental training. It's a training, it's an intention, and it's uh, something that's, again, active that we cultivate. And so it, it's uh, intentional and active dwelling in this mental training, heart training. And tonight I want to offer a particular version of Metta Bhavana. And it's, it's really comes before the version that we're most familiar with. It has phrases and categories of being. Uh, this was developed in later commentaries and I think in the Vishuddhi Maga, but, um, but, uh, in the suttas, in the original, as much as we have access to original mm, teachings that were written down from this oral tradition, uh, in the Majjhima Nikaya, this comes up, 
Sutta 99 for those that are interested. And it's also in the Diga Nikaya 13. So is a, a practice that is sometimes referred to as radiant metta or radiating metta. And it's not necess- it, it doesn't have particular phrases like, may you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe, may you be peaceful. Um, and it doesn't have particular categories of beings like friendly people, unfriendly people, neutral people, etc. Um, and it's a really beautiful, um, beautiful practice. So this, uh, I recently had the opportunity to really, really feel deeply resourced and uh, felt experience of this kind of um, practice, which I'm calling a rippling metta, but it's it's radiant metta, radiating metta. Um, recently, a very dear one um, died, and and their time of death was known. And so many loved ones that weren't able to be present in body at that time, you know, all the way across the country, into other countries, across borders and boundaries and lines drawn in the sand, there were people practicing really metta, practicing this deep heartfelt intention for this dear one to may you be peaceful, may may be safe, may your transition be with ease and boundless love. And people did this, you know, through ceremony or poetry or dancing or singing across the waters and lots of different ways that this happened for people in a way that was resonant for them. But it was really So uh, comforting and uh, heart expanding to feel across different time zones, all these intentions rippling and supporting each other as well as ourselves. And to me, it's like uh, picturing a still body of water, a still pond, perhaps, with pebbles dropped in wherever wherever we are and all of these pebbles creating ripples and the the ripples overlap and mm, intertwine and affect each other and we receive the ripples back from other people's intentions and actions and speech in this case we're talking about skillful actions and speech and intentions um and right now right now in this moment with this rogue hair in in this moment and all around the world at any time through the night different time zones at any moment i i mm, feel the heart touched by this often in any moment that awareness wants to drop into it, there's people offering metta to us. And when we practice, may all beings, you know, if we're using a phrase practice or just this heart radiant practice, all beings. And so that that's happening for us all the time. There's people, many people, there's always someone practicing metta. That's very cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> and I allow myself to feel resourced by that. Yeah, and I hope you do as well. Um, yeah, so do I want to? Yes, I will. You'll get used to it, this inner dialogue that comes out. Um, so in the Majjhima Nikaya, which is the middle length discourses, the Buddha is speaking to um, uh, a young 
a younger person that's asking lots of questions about how to practice um, in their busy life. And uh, the Buddha offers this in part, along with a lot of other stuff. Um, and I've did a bit of a mashup here of a couple different translations. Mm, the gist is totally consistent and it's, um, I've taken out some of the gendering and stuff like that. So we're, we'll practice it this way with this radiant metta. One meditates and abides. So this word abides is important that, oh, I, I love that word, abides. That's so beautiful and evocative, just living in, resting in, abiding. It's like your home. It's so good. One abides with their heart, imbued with loving kindness, friendliness, goodwill. And some translations say extending or pervading. Uh, one of the translations I like is suffusing over one quarter. So it's kind of done in these directions, one quarter and the second quarter, third, fourth, above and below, in all directions. And uh, But suffusing. We have a huge lilac tree out front, and they just went crazy this year. Really so lush. And just walking down the path, or even sometimes in the house with the window open, it's that sense of suffusing. It's just... <laughs> mm, just spreads. Not by pushing, not by effort. It's just, it's nature. It's just natural. It's just nature. Suffusing. So this is the quality that we're going to cultivate. So here's one abiding, their heart, our hearts imbued or with friendliness, with kindness, with benevolence, goodwill, suffusing in all these directions. Um, you know, just like a beautiful scent. And... Uh, As well as to oneself, it says, to all as to oneself. So that's very important. And one abides with the heart abundant. Love these exalted. Exalted, measureless in loving kindness. This is, <laughs> it's not that we have to pervade or extend or push anything. These heart qualities are already boundless. They are already all pervasive. And it's the self that gets in the way. Yeah, I like you, but not you so much. <laughs> I like these are my friendly people, unfriendly. It's, it's this individual selfness that's, that uh, gets into judgment and separation and boundaries. And um, I'm not saying boundaries are a bad thing, but, you know, we, we have these categories of people that are worthy of, of loving kindness and others that are not. And that is not the nature of this quality it already is boundless and we're just getting out of the way as much as possible and so this uh abundant exalted measureless loving kindness without hostility or ill will extending over the all-encompassing world when the heart's release by loving kindness is developed and maintained in this way any limited deeds one has done don't remain or persist there. We were talking about this in a class earlier this morning about wise efforts in the Eightfold Path, the Middle Path, and how if one is skillfully, not spiritually bypassing, but skillfully cultivating 
connection to this heart quality, then unskillful mind states cannot be fueled at the same time, cannot be. And this is what it's saying here. So any any limited deeds um, don't remain and persist there. And then the sutta goes on to say, just as a, well, the translations say a powerful uh, trumpeter, but it would have been a conch shell, uh, you know, big shell that they blow in, it sounds like a big horn, um, could easily make themselves heard in all the directions, right? It, it, the sound vibrates in all directions in the same way. When the heart's release by loving kindness has been developed like this, any limited deeds done don't remain or persist there. The sutta goes on to also include compassion, resonant joy, and equanimity, all four of the Brahmavihara or heart abode practices and qualities. So this is the um, the sutta, one of the sutta references to this practice that has um, become other forms. And um, when we do the practice, I will also read um, as part of the practice um, from the Karaniya Metta Sutta. It's in the Samyutta Nikaya 1.8. I'll put these links um, down below in the YouTube recording. Um, but Karaniya, I, I wasn't familiar with that word. And so I looked it up and it means what ought to be done. Yes. <laughs> what ought to be done, Sutta. It's so clear. <laughs> this is what ought to be done. What ought to be cultivated and brought into fruition uh, for our peace of heart, mind, and for the well-being of all beings. Okay. I think that's all. Yes. I'm amused because it seems like there's a crowd around me that I'm talking to and receiving. <laughs> That's funny. So this is a, I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to doing this practice. Um, and to receive this practice as well. Um, and I hope it touches your, your heart mind as well. Um, there's a, another Pali word called citta, C-I-T-T-A. And uh, this means the heart mind or the aware heart. It's uh, often, uh, it's considered that it resides in this area of the body, heart mind, citta, citta. And uh, go there. And um, so, when we do this practice, I might invite uh, the spark of our intention to be felt in this area, and then we'll we'll open into these directions. Yay! Okay, so get get comfy and kind with your body, please. Feel free to turn away from the computer if you like, or dim your lights. You might like to. Practices laying down, mm, whatever feels really uh, compassionate to your energy, to your body, um, to your being. Mm. All right. Mm. So take your time to land into presence with yourself. See if you need any stretch or touch or movement. Any other supports for your body.
and just begin by gently feeling your kind and wise intention to be here right now, to show up for yourself because you have an intention of loving kindness already that you want to cultivate and grow, an intention of cultivating wisdom and presence and care. And I don't doubt for a moment that that's why we're all here for some to whatever degree. So allow yourself to feel resourced by your, your own skillfulness in your presence here. Offering gratitude and thanks to your, your own skillfulness and wise intention. And then just taking time to begin meeting ourselves where we are, whatever we're showing up with in this moment. The joys, the grief, fear, anger, sorrow, numbness, heartache, whatever is here. What's What's here in the body, there may be physical pain. You know, just bring kind attention to meeting whatever's here in your heart, mind, body, and energy. Let's have a few minutes of silence together to just check in with yourself. Say hello, sweetheart, how are you? What's here? And feel your relationship in this present moment with the, the loving care and support of the earth. Holding us in this moment. All of these elements of the earth nurturing us and supporting us in relationship with if there's any habitual or residual tension in the body and that feels like it's holding you away from the ground can you let it soften or a bit of space, a bit of release so that you can rest more deeply, be held more completely? And from this place of presence, 
in kind attention with ourselves in this moment. See what helps you to drop into this wise intention as if it's like a little spark that is there in the chitta, in the awake heart, heart mind. Spark of goodwill, of kindness. And as you breathe and you almost feel as if that spark is being fanned by the beautiful winds of attention and it starts to suffuse the body. Not limited by our contractions of unworthiness, not enoughness, fear, just caring awareness, suffusing your whole being. The light of kind attention in the darkest or shadowy places. Nothing left out or nothing unloved. And feel yourself abiding fully in this body, suffused with this spark, this radiant care. Resting in your nature. And then if it resonates for you, this image of a curtain, that this curtain opens in the, the front of the body this first quarter and just feeling this boundless pervading heart imbued with loving kindness that suffuses this first quarter, and it might just extend slightly beyond the periphery of our physical form, or it might, just like the perfume of a lilac, it has no boundary. Just rest in this felt experience. There's no need to push or even send loving kindness. Simply drawing back the curtain of the curtain of delusion. and separateness.
And then feeling this aware, energetic curtain drawing back from the right side of the body. This second quarter. Interconnected. Likewise, the third quarter, drawing that curtain around behind the body. Awake awareness. Pervading the back body. And likewise, the fourth quarter, the left side of the body. And so above, below, all around and everywhere. All the sentient beings in and on the, and above the earth, the winged and feathered, finned, many-legged, two-legged, all beings, all as well as one's self. For a few minutes together in silence, just abiding, reside here with abundant heart, measureless, Without exception, without judgment, hostility, or ill will. Like the conch shell that is heard in all directions. Rest and abide in the boundless quality of care and goodwill.
and feel how these ripples also ripple back and include this self. And the ripples, the effects are boundless and unseen by us. Gently notice how the aware heart, when it is suffused with loving kindness, metta bhavana, that unskillful states of heart and mind have no persistence in this place. They're not being fueled or clung to or pushed away but just resting in the full abiding of goodwill. And as you continue this abiding and cultivation and meditation, I'll slowly read the Karaniya Metta Sutta, the what ought to be done teachings from the Buddha on loving kindness. This is what should be done. by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let us be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech. humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties and frugal in our ways. peaceful and calm and wise and skillful. Not proud or demanding in nature. Let us not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove. Wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. whatever living beings there may be, 
whether they are weak or strong, omitting none. The great or the mighty, medium, short or small, those seen and those unseen. those living near and far away, those born and yet to be born, may all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another. Even as a loving parent protects with their life their child, their only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings. Radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies. And downwards to the depths. Outwards and unbounded. Read from hatred and ill will. Whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should, should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding. This is a beautiful practice to do as you're retiring for the night, as you're 
going to sleep, as you're waking up, as you're standing, walking, lying down, sitting, eating. Hmm. As it says in the sutta, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down. Um, hmm. And um, and for those of you that um, offer your support to me through Donna um, and voluntary donations, I'm so grateful for your support. And um, for this month of May, if you would consider uh, supporting True North Insight instead, that would be um, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, acknowledging our interconnectedness. And um, I wouldn't be here without True North Insight uh, and um, without my teachers who were some of the founders of True North Insight and uh, without all the retreats, all the retreats that I've sought. Um, so grateful, so, so grateful. Um and uh, any gift you're able to make helps us to continue to continue the Dhamma, um, this ancient ancient wisdom. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Uh, the link is down below, and uh, I can put it here in the chat again for folks that want it here. It's on the True North Insight website. And uh, thank you for practicing with us. May you be well and peaceful and at ease.